In this video, you're going to learn how to graph the sine and cosine graphs as well as graphing sine and cosine when they're transformed. We're going to be working with this general formula right here where H is the horizontal shift, K is the vertical shift, B is related to the period through this formula, 2 pi divided by B, and then A is going to be our amplitude or our vertical stretch or compress. So let's start off by talking about how do you graph the basic sine and cosine graph. Well, if you go to the unit circle, which you probably already learned about previously, if not, check out my Mastering the Unit Circle video. When we think about the unit circle, when we're talking about sine, what we do is we go to the angle, for example, zero radians, and we say, what's the sine of zero radians? Well, it's gonna be the y coordinate. So you can see at zero, sine is gonna be equal to zero. At pi over two or 90 degrees, you can see that the sine, the y value is gonna be one. So at pi over two, let's put a point at one. And then at pi, 180 degrees, you can see that the y value uh, is gonna be zero. So that's gonna be right there. And then at three pi over two, which is right here, you can see the sine value is negative one. And then at two pi, you're back to zero. And what happens is that this graph just repeats like this. It's like an S shape forever and ever. So it's good to have a basic understanding and a, a kind of a memorization of what the basic shape of the sine graph looks like. What I like to think of is it starts at the midline it goes to the maximum, back to the midline, minimum, back to the midline. Now let's look at cosine, same idea. When you work with cosine, you're gonna look at the x coordinates, okay? So cosine of zero radians is gonna be one, so we actually start up here at one. At pi over two or 90, you can see that cosine is gonna be zero. At pi, you can see that cosine is negative one. At three pi over two, cosine is gonna be zero and at two pi, you're back to one. And so you can see the basic shape of the cosine graph looks something like that. And I like to think of it as starting at the maximum, then going to the midline, minimum, midline, back to the maximum. So again, you wanna memorize the basic shape for cosine. It'll make it easier when we go into these more challenging examples that we're gonna be doing uh, next. So first, let's start off with kind of a basic one, and then we'll get more challenging as we go. See if you can graph y equals two sine one half x. Okay, so the way I would approach this is I would say, okay, this number that comes in front of the sine or the cosine, that's involved with the vertical stretch or shrink. If it's greater than one, it's gonna be a stretch. If it's uh, between zero and one, it's gonna be a shrink. This is what we call our amplitude. And when you think of amplitude, you can think of these as like waves. And it's like, how high are the waves from that midline, okay? And so what you can do here is you can see that they're gonna be too high, okay? And so what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a vertical stretch of the sine graph by two. Okay, you're multiplying all the y values by two. But what does this one half do? Well, the one half is related to the period through this formula, two pi divided by b. So you can see if we were to put one half in here, two pi divided by one half, well, when you divide, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's really like multiplying by the reciprocal of one half, which is two. And you can see that's gonna come out to a period of four pi. So what I like to do next is, I like to take that four pi, excuse me, and divide it by four, because that's gonna give us the scale on the horizontal axis. So four pi divided by four gives us one pi. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count by uh, pi. So this is gonna be one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, just like you see over here where we divide it up into quarters, one, two, three, four, just like the quadrant. See one, two, okay, dividing up into fourths. Again, we know that sine starts at the midline, so right here, it goes up to the maximum, that's two, back to the midline, down to the minimum, that's here at negative two, back to the midline, and that's gonna give us our basic you know, shape of our sine graph. The only difference is it's been stretched by two in the vertical direction, it's also been uh, stretched in the horizontal direction by two, and again, we figured that out because um, the one half here, group with the x, has the opposite effect on the graph, and actually, instead of, looks like you're dividing by two, it's actually multiplying the x values by two. But what a lot of students like to do is just use this formula, two pi over b, to find the new period. Again, the period is how long it takes for it to complete one cycle before it repeats. Then divide it by four, or multiply by one fourth, to get the scale, like what you're counting by each of those quarters. Okay, let's look at another example. See if you can do number four here. We've got y equals negative cosine of two times the quantity x minus pi over four. Okay, a little bit more challenging here. What do you think the negative does to the graph? 
Well, the negative is going to make all the y values the opposite sign, so it's going to actually reflect it over the x-axis. Okay. Now, when you talk about the amplitude, this number here that comes in front of the sine or the cosine, the amplitude is always positive. So if your teacher says, what's the amplitude? Here you would say the amplitude's one. Here you'd say the amplitude's two. It's always positive. This negative is just reflecting it. Okay. Now let's go to the period. So we're going to use this formula again, 2 pi divided by b, b is 2. So that means that period is going to be 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi, okay? And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the scale by multiplying this by 1 fourth or dividing by 4. So that's going to be pi divided by 4, 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and then 4 pi over 4, which is pi. So we're always dividing up into fours. But now we're working with cosine. And when we think about cosine, we know that cosine normally starts at the maximum value, right? But because it's being reflected because of this negative, it's gonna go start, start down here at the minimum value, right? But what about this pi over four? Well, the pi over four, okay, when it's grouped with the x like this, it's shifting it in the horizontal direction, left and right. But this actually has the opposite effect. So the minus pi over four is actually gonna pick up the graph and shift it to the right pi over four. What I like to do is I like to draw like an open circle, okay, and I'm going to think of this as my new origin. So if I wanted to, I could kind of draw in like a dotted line. This is kind of like my new y-axis. This is kind of like, you know, my x-axis, and this is like my origin or my starting point. So now that I've taken the shift into account, all I have to do now is graph my basic cosine graph, but keep in mind that it's reflected, so it's going to start down here. So it's going to start over here at uh, negative 1, then it's going to go back to the midline, up to the maximum, positive 1, back to the midline, and then over here, back to the minimum. This is going to be at 5 pi over 4. And now if we draw our graph, we've got it. Now you can draw more points and continue on that graph in bo uh, both directions, but this is one period or one cycle. Let's do a couple more examples. Okay, see if you can do number 5. We've got y equals 3 sine x minus 3. How would you graph that one? Well. The first thing I want you to notice is, is this 3 grouped with this x? Well, if it was in parentheses, like you see here, then it would be what we call a phase shift, left and right. Okay, But because the 3 is not grouped with the x, this tells us that it's a vertical shift up and down. The minus 3 is going to shift it down 3. If it was plus 3, it would shift it up 3. This k value has the same effect as the sine, whereas the one grouped with the x, remember that has the opposite effect. So here what I like to do, because it's minus 3 shifted down 3, is I like to go down 3, and I like to draw like a dashed or dotted line. I'm going to think of this as our new x-axis, okay? It's not shifting left or right, so I'm going to think of this point right here at negative 3 as our new origin, or our new starting point. Now all I have to do is focus on what's left, which is y equals 3 sine of x, and we know the 3 already is the amplitude, that's the vertical stretch, it's stretching it by 3 in the, the y direction. Uh, and all we have to do now, if we are familiar with our sine graph, is graph the sine graph, but instead of going up to 1, we're going to go up to 3. Instead of going down to negative 1, we're going to go down to negative 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So it starts at the midline, okay, for sine. Cosine, remember, starts at the maximum. Then we're going to go up to the maximum, okay, which is going to be here at 0. Okay, I went up 3. Then we're back to the midline. Then we're down to the minimum, which is going to be 3 below that midline. And then we're back to the midline. Okay, now the only thing that I didn't put in this uh, yet are the, the scale, the x uh, values here. So what we want to do is we want to look at the number that comes in front of x. That's 1. We want to use the formula 2 pi divided by b. That b is 1. So 2 pi divided by 1 is 2 pi. Okay, so that's going to be our period. And then we want to divide that by 4, or multiply by 1 fourth. And that's going to give us a scale of pi over 2 once we reduce. So we're counting here by pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, which is pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, and that gives us our scale. Okay, let's go to number 6 now. See if you can do this one. y equals cosine pi over 4 times the quantity x plus 2 plus 1. Okay, so what do you think on this one? Well, the first thing I, I like to do, and I didn't do it on this one, but what I like to do first is I like to figure out what the period is. So I can figure out what the scale is on our x-axis. So let's do that first. We've got period equals 2 pi divided by pi over 4, right? That's our b value. When we divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is really like 2 pi times 4 over pi. 2 pi is like 2 pi over 1. See how the pi's cancel, and 2 times 4 gives us a period of 8. 
So let's go to our x-axis here. Let's call this 8. If we divide this by 4, because remember we're dividing up into 4 pieces, this is going to give us a scale of 2. So it's going to go 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, so I just keep adding 2 each time. Now what I like to do is I like to take the shift into account. So this is the phase shift, left and right. This is our vertical shift, up and down. Remember the one group with the x has the opposite effect. So the plus 2 is actually going to shift it to the left 2. And the plus 1 is going to shift it up 1. So what we're going to think of is going left 2, up 1. This is going to be like our new starting point right here, our new origin. I like to draw in like a dashed or dotted line okay, to represent the x-axis. You can do the same thing with the, the y-axis. So this is like our new origin. Now all we have to do is graph our cosine graph. It has an amplitude of 1. See how there's nothing in front of the cosine that's understood to be 1 cosine. And we know that the cosine starts here at the maximum, at the high point. So in this case, our high point is going to be at 1 because the amplitude is 1. So it's going to start here at 1. It goes back to the uh, midline, which is going to be right here. And then it goes down to the minimum, back to the midline, and then back to the maximum, which is here at 1. So we've got our graph looks something like this. And you can keep repeating, etc. Let's do one last example that involves all these different transformations so you can get a really good grasp on this. Okay, see if you can do this one. This is a real challenging example here. One half sine of the quantity 3x plus pi minus 2. It's got a little bit of everything. And the first thing I like to do is to find that period and that x scale. So what's interesting about this problem though is you see how that this isn't in this form where it's like x plus something or x minus something. There's that 3 in front of the x. What we want to do is we want to factor out that 3 to put it into this form. It's easier to identify the phase shift. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to factor out the 3, which that's going to leave us with pi over 3 inside of the parentheses. So what I did is I, I factored out the 3 or you know divided out the 3. You can see if you double uh, check by distributing, you get back the 3x plus pi, which is what we have here. So now you can see that that b value is 3 and our period is going to be 2 pi divided by 3. Okay, now if we multiply that by 1 fourth to find our scale, what we're counting by, that's going to give us 2 pi over 12, which reduces down to pi over 6. Okay, so let's go ahead and put 2 pi over 3 here. Divide that into four pieces, which is pi over 6. So this is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6. You can reduce that to pi over 3. 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. And if you go the other direction, this would be like a negative pi over 6, a negative 2 pi over 6, which is a negative pi over 3 if you reduce. Now, what we want to do is we want to take into account the phase shift and the vertical shift. So the plus pi over 3, remember the one group with the x has the opposite effect. This is actually going to shift it left pi over 3. So because our scale is pi over 6, we have to shift two steps to the left. So that's going to be pi over 3, negative pi over 3 over here. The minus 2 has the same effect. It's going to shift down 2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shift left pi over 3, down 2. We're going to think of this as our new origin. And you can draw in like a, a new axis right here through this point. And we're going to think of this as our starting point or our origin. Now we're going to graph our sine graph, but you can see the 1 half is our amplitude. This is like a vertical shrink by 1 half. It's going to have the same basic shape as the graph of sine here, just compressed by 1 half in the vertical direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here. We're going to go uh, up to the maximum, which is going to be a half above our midline, back to the midline. We're going to go a half below that midline, okay? Then we're going to go back to the midline. And it just repeats, so you can keep you know, going and making more cycles. But that's going to be your basic graph one period. If you want to learn more about graphing sine and cosine, as well as graphing tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, follow me over to that video right there, where we'll dive more into the other trigonometric functions and how to graph them. I'll see you in that video.